Not live just yet. And come on. Facebook, you can do it. You can do it. Okay. Oh. Haha. Uh -huh. All right. Cool. What's up, hacksters? <laughs> it is What the Wednesday, and this uh, today we are talking about what is solar power. Uh, we just had Earth Day a couple days ago, and so I'm really excited to talk about this one. It's been a while since I was able to, uh, or it's taken a while to get everything into the lab at once. But yeah, we're going to take a look at several different ways that you can start playing around with solar tech, as well as a few cool links to start off with. So, uh, we've talked before about our friend Kitty Young's amazing solar-powered dress, and it's featured in this field trip that we took um, to Microsoft Garage. And this is the first project that she built there. She was able to charge a battery off of this 5-volt solar panel at Maker Fair last year. Uh, with its cool 3D printed mount there and then when her phone ran out of battery it saved her day because she was able to charge it off of that battery. So cool! There are commercial options for this as well of course but uh, I think it's cool to build your own stuff. So you can read about how Kitty did it over here including the garment design which is so cool it's kind of steampunk in fact, I think I talked about this on the Steampunk Day a couple days ago. <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Um, time has no meaning anymore. Yeah, uh, and also I've built a project before, the Solar Lego Nightlight, which uh, includes a tilt switch so that when you tilt it over, the light turns on, uh, and it's also glow-in-the-dark, but uh, most of the time it's just going to be charging, and uh, yeah, so that way it helps. It's a really useful thing for keeping by your bed at night. <laughs> and that was made with this little thingy I have here, which is a solar flashlight that I disemboweled <laughs> and then put into the 3D printed enclosure, which you can download from that project, which is linked as everything else in the description to the video. All right, and let's see what else have we got up here. Uh, so one thing that I'm going to be working with today are Adafruit's round solar panel skill badges. Now we apparently ordered eight of these for a hackathon years ago and have never used them and today is the perfect time to do it because I'm like, oh the world is burning, it's Earth Day, we need to do something cool. And uh, we got eight of these. And it's a 5 volt 40 milliamp panel which means that if I hook them up in parallel, I can get 5 volts a uh, much higher current, which will be very nice. I've actually done a couple of tests with this in the sun already today, which we'll look at in a second as well. Um, there isn't a great tutorial for using this though, so this is partly why I want to make one. There's one project that I've found before that uses the skill badge to power... Oh, I should put that as a link in this, mm, but I'll have to find it. Anyway. I found one project already that uses this to power like an at tiny and a temperature sensor and an LED that changes color based on the temperature, which is pretty impressive for a 40 milliamp badge. But uh, yeah, that's a little complex. I'd like to start off with something simpler and just make a charger like Kitty made. Um, but I'm going to make it into a hat, my sun hat. This is the same hat that I used for the chirp. Uh, audio hat that would trigger when you push little capacitive sensors, but um, I had to dismantle that for another project, so now I'm going to remantle it for this one. That's not a word. Anyway. <laughs> um, but there is this excellent video featuring Colin talking about solar panel power and how it works. It's very pretty as well. <laughs> uh, and then Adafruit has another whole page a whole section on solar power, so including this lithium ion slash polymer charger, LiPo charger, which works with any of their 6 volt solar panels, of which they have several. They've got the medium, large, and huge ones. However, these are 6 volts, which is what the charger re circuit requires. It is not designed to work with other panels you may have, uh, so it may or may not work with those, and it is not designed to work with this 5 volt one. So um, oh yeah, they've also got some really cool little solar badges from Aluminum Electronic, which has these super teeny tiny little solar panel cells, and I'm really excited to play around with that someday, someday, uh, as well as a colossal and small solar panels. 
all kinds of levels that you can get involved with. Sadly, this cool blinky owl one is discontinued, but yeah, all kinds of stuff. Ooh, flexible. Oh, discontinued. No. Uh, why are you breaking my heart? I ate a fruit. Um, and I was a little confused. Okay, okay, let's take a look at the test I ran because this is relevant. So I just took these panels out to our windowsill and I messed around with a single one and a double one that I wired up in parallel just to see what kind of stuff we would get out of here. And granted, you know, with these probes that you get with your multimeter, it's not gonna be a great contact surface. So I'm guessing that some of the irregularities that I saw or unexpected behavior were based on that. But let's take a look at what happened. So this is reading volts. Um, and this is not connected yet, but, oh, there's a bunch of like setting it up so I can actually see. <laughs> but when I had just one on there, it was somewhere around two to three volts, mostly two volts, which is strange. Um, and I think that that might be mostly based on the contact, I'm not sure, but we'll find out with more experimentation. And then I shifted over to milliamps and I was able to get only up to one milliamp. <laughs> Granted, this is not in full sun, and from everything that I've read about solar power this week, uh, it does very much depend on being in full sun. So if, you're, if it's cloudy out, if you're in shadow, you're going to get a lot less efficiency out of solar panels. So that's partly why I want to make it into a hat, because especially at Maker Faire, I'm going to be wandering around in the sun. Hopefully I'll be able to perch in the shade. I can put my hat on the ground next to me, have it charging a battery while I'm running around doing my thing or just chatting in the shade. Um, and then everything, everything, everyone will be happy. Another cool feature of the hat is that <clears throat> what I've seen from reading about solar panels is that, you know, oh, and solar charging in general, is that you have companies that sell commercial solar panels for charging while you're on the go, but if you're trying to charge your phone or whatever, A, there may be problems with the phone actually recognizing the charger if it's not pu pushing enough juice, so that's probably why you want to charge a battery, but also B, phones don't, and often other types of like batteries and things, don't tend to be happy in full sun, especially while they're charging, they can overheat. So the hat also provides shade for those things. I don't need a, a little stand or anything. So I really hope to make this part of my summer adventures. It's suddenly become very sunny in San Francisco and I want to take full advantage of that. Okay, so this is when I hooked up the two in parallel and we're back on volts again. And I got up to about 4.5 volts on that. Not sure if you can see, let me move this up. 4.5 volts-ish. Uh, which surprised me, because if they're in parallel, then, oh, six volts. Like, that, that doesn't make sense to me, because they're in parallel, which means that they should um, keep the same voltage and add the current, which is confusing. But I'm going to hook up ten of them together and see what happens. <laughs> Maybe we'll just, like, have a huge amount of voltage. I don't know. Um, we will find out. And probably someone's gonna get at me in the comments telling me like why, how I'm all wrong and stuff. But yeah. Um, and then I switched over to milliamps again and from this one I got about three milliamps. So that's pretty nice. I feel like it might have gotten sunnier as well um, because there were about 10 minutes between these tests of the single versus the double solar panel. So since it's about three times the current and about twice to two and a half times the voltage, uh, it, it could have to do with the attachments to the micro, uh, the multimeter, and it could have to do with the sun changing, and I'm not sure. That's what you get when you work with nature. <laughs> but that's probably why I'm excited to build this project, is because I want to understand this stuff. So much so that I am not going to lunch yet, and instead we're going to hang out and try and build something. So what have I got here? I've got the Adafruit Solar Skill Badge, um, which is about $3 on the website, and has a whole little workshop. If you're with a class, you can give them these questions that they can use to explore solar energy. And um, here we go. Wait, oh, where's the, uh, yeah. 
in their learning system. They have all these questions and example activities, but they do not actually tell you uh, how to do all that stuff. It should be fairly simple, though. So we have that. And then we also have this little solar flashlight, which is about three bucks again at my local computer store. And we also have this Sparkle Labs Sun Mod hacking kit, which I picked up at the MIT Museum shop for 20 bucks. This was a few months ago, but they probably still have them, and I bet you can find it online. Um, this one is designed to charge AA and AAA batteries, rechargeable batteries. Um, it says nickel metal hydride batteries, and I happen to have a bag of these from back in the day when I was actually using a bunch of these types of batteries. I don't have a holder, but let me check. So these Duracell ones are nickel metal hydride, as it says there. Ooh, da -da. N-I-M-H, triple A's. Um, then we have some double A's from the same company. Nickel metal hydride again, cool. And we have some Kodak batteries for digital ba for digital cameras, so it should be high capacity. Also nickel metal hydride, and we have some energizers, uh, which yes, glorious. So all of these should work with the um, little Sparkle Labs charger. This is not what I'm going to work on first, though. But that will I think be the subject of another hat. Um, Jay's gear bracelet runs on three volts, and um, I figure I can turn it into a little solar panel powered hat with the gears that will turn when it's in the sun. That'd be super cool. Mm, but we're going to start out with my sun hat, this big one. It's going to be sweet. So let me check for any comments right now. <laughs> solar punk, yes, extremely solar punk. Uh, very excited about that. So, we're going to attach these all in series and attach them also to the hat, and then during lunch I'm going to go and try to find some sun to put my hat in. <laughs> cool. Mm -mm. Move everything else out of the way. We've got our solder. I'm using lead-free solder because I became a hippie. Uh, <laughs> I've got this Microsoft Azure battery. Let me see actually if this has any charge on it right now because what I want to do is see if I can charge it up enough during lunch to run something off and I have chosen the Fenderino which is by David Cuartieres I think um, and his crew. So let's see. <laughs> Does it have any juice? I think no. Let's try it in another power outlet just to make sure that I'm not making a mistake somehow. Ooh, okay, yeah, this may not be on. How do I turn it on? Hmm. Oh, it is on. It just takes a minute. How do I, oh. Okay, cool. So that's what it should do when it has power, and I'm going to test the battery again. Because it did take a minute to load up, so who knows. Venderino. <laughs> you should totally go check that out. I have a build video for this one as well. But yeah, so far, nothing. And hopefully it's going to be something at the end of lunch. All right, so first thing to do is figure out where all they're going to go. I think I'm going to lace the wires through the hat so it'll kind of make a design on the bottom part as well as having the uh, panels on the outside. So I've got a couple colors of wire I can use here. There's blue, there's black as well, and there's yellow. I think I'll do blue and black. Let me go grab my uh, big reel of black. Mm 
Turns out they are both solid core, so that'll help. Cool, I've got my wire strippers. Now what I want to do is hook up this little micro USB cable that I snipped up before. I've previously cut up a bunch of USB cables, so I just found this micro USB end in my sort of odds and ends drawer and stripped off the outside. There's these two data cables, the green and the white one, which I cut down, and then there's the red and the black one, which I've stripped. So that should give us a little head start. I'm going to have that go into the inside of the hat, like so and uh, that will power the battery. Eventually it'd be nice to have some kind of 3D printed insert that'll hold the battery, but also that would limit me in terms of which batteries I can charge in here. So, um, As with most batteries of this type, it has power out through a USB-A connection and power in through this micro USB connection. So in theory I could actually charge a device from this while I'm charging it up via solar, uh, which would be pretty cool. I'm going to tin these, and in the meantime, let's take all of these out of their bags. Oh yeah, the cool thing about the Solar Skill Badge, since it's a badge, it comes with a pin, so you can actually wear your project. Super easy. I'm going to see if I can find that other one for you to look at as well. Um, solar... Mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah. Circuit. What was it? Mm. <laughs> Can't find it. Oh well. So my soldering iron's heating up. Uh, these also come with a protective film over the panel, which uh, once it's removed, it actually looks pretty nice and shiny. So that's why I'm not afraid of wearing this in public. <laughs> I think it'll look pretty cool. So how many of these do I actually have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. So in theory, in theory, these can get up to 40 milliamps each, which would be eight, uh, 320 milliamps total. I kind of doubt that I'm going to get that at any point, but it would be cool. I guess while I'm working on this, I won't take the film off. What I want to do is create a sort of fishtail pattern because uh, these have two contacts each, or two sets of contacts. There's these ones and there's these ones. So if I do like, um, instead of the way I've got it now, do like from these points out to the middle points, it'll make a cool arrow design. I have to figure out spacing for one thing though. So let's see. If I put. Um, <laughs> Just gonna throw these on here. Oh yeah, these get perfectly. These look great. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I tried to say pretty and beautiful at once, and I came up with pretty. Oh wait, mm, that's if I wanted eight. So if I want not ten, then I can do this. Still looks great. I do want to try and get all ten on here. That'd be boss. So they'll be pretty close together. Um. And it'll be very flashy. I like it. A good conversation starter, for sure. So then, mm -mm -mm, I'm going to solder wires onto one of these. And actually, why don't I just start by detaching these? Um, and thread the wires through the hat. And how I'm going to get. <laughs> I guess I will have a little bit of um, slack and then I will foam tape down the solar cells. Now, I want to have one end of the hat be where the wire goes in. Or should it be on the side, actually? Maybe it should be on the side, since that's a shorter distance. And maybe more towards the back. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe this one. Which is like roughly here on the hat. It's like longest this way, and this is kind of in the back, but in the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first up, I'm disconnecting these. 
And I will also make sure that I have a connection to the inside. Hmm. It has to go under the hat as well. Or does it? It doesn't have to go under the hat. It could go through a hole in the side. This is a very cheap hat, and so I've also got, um, besides my knife here, I've got a Sharpie, <laughs> because the inside of the actual material of the hat is white, uh, and then I can just Sharpie over <laughs> anything uh, that looks not great. Where the white shows through. So I think I'm gonna um, put a hole in the hat here so that I can thread the wires through, and that'll give it a little bit of stability. Yeah, stability is good. So this is for the wires connecting the USB cord to the solar panels. Do I want to do black and blue or just black? Or just blue? I think I'll do just black, because it'll look cool. Um, but I will, no, it's good to know which is which. Okay. I'm, I'm debating because black is like subtle, but it'll still look cool, but it won't look that bad if I mess up. Uh, whereas blue is sort of like, I mean, obviously, but also, uh, will help me differentiate the two poles of the solar cells, which is valuable because I expect it to break as all projects eventually do. So I'm going to start out with a length of black and a length of blue. Don't need that much. I'm going to grab my heat shrink while I'm at it. Oh yeah, I love heat shrink. Um, I used to not like it because it was a pain to remember to put it on my circuits, but then I realized but it's really the only time I get to play with fire in the office. So, um, because of the way that I shrink the heat shrink, I usually use a lighter, but I can't seem to find my small handheld lighter. So, I've got this sort of grill lighter here, which is great. And you just have to make sure to distribute the heat evenly. So I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this. There we go. And I'm going to put them onto the two pieces of wire that I have. I'm going to strip those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, tin both of these. Still getting the hang of this lead free. And then tin these. As usual, I stripped pretty short ends of these because um, typically a bit of the Uh, the sheath will strip off or will burn off while you apply heat. That doesn't actually count if you get Adafruit silicone coated wire, which I keep meaning to do and keep forgetting. Um, I'm really excited to play with that because it is heat resistant and very flexible. This is not very flexible. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold these together and apply heat to meld them. It's not the most beautiful connection ever, but it works. Actually, I am going to rework that a little bit. The angle is off. Mm. Ah! <laughs> I should really be using a third hand for this. Come here, Trio. It's 
It's a bit of a crowded desk right now, so. Much better. Okay. And then the other one. Cool. Those look good. I'm gonna throw the heat shrink over. And stay in place, you. Apply heat. And there we go. So at this point, I might actually put one bigger piece on around both, just because stability is good. Yeah, now I'm glad I'm using the blue as well. That's, that's a good choice. <laughs> Got a nice piece of the bigger heat shrink. I'm going to throw that over the ends here. And this should protect the entire joint. So here's before heating and here it is after. I usually gauge the size of heat shrink that I need just by what's the smallest size that will fit over uh, what I've got here, and that tends to work pretty well. Okay, so there's our little connector for charging the guy. I'm going to thread these two wires through the hat, from the outside through this hole, or from the inside rather, through this hole. I left the knife there just so I could find it again, but obviously you don't want to just leave blades in your projects. Ah, it's not big enough. Is it? Ah. Come on. Actually, since this hat has a an elastic band on the inside, I think I'll poke it through that first, so. Ooh, there goes my battery. <laughs> yeah. Making my hole bigger. And I'm gonna poke it through this elastic here, which has some little holes between it and the hat. Hmm. Go through there. Do it. There we are. Haha. -ha. Now it is through the elastic webbing. And I can pull this through and shove it through the outside of the hat. The crown of the hat, is that what this would be called? Hmm. I'm not a I'm not a milliner. I don't know these words. Okay, right, cool. So we've got a decent sized pair of wires coming out to the outside. We've got a decent sized charger cable on the inside, and I'm ready to begin. Cool. And really what I should be doing is going to get lunch, but uh, I, wanna, I wanna test this during lunch. I'm probably not gonna get outside again today. That's not true. But I wanna take advantage of the high sun, you know? Stripping these, and I'm gonna connect them to one of these um, panels. What I should do first though is figure out, make sure I know exactly where they're going.
because if it's super uneven, that'll look bad. Okay. And I'm going to connect these to the inside, I guess. Hmm. I'm having second thoughts about my design. Because uh, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing as well as work. And if I put all the silvery parts to the outside, it'll look cool. Uh, but I'll have to be very precise on the ankle or it won't look good. Okay. I think this is fine. just looking like this right now. Let's get these hooked up to the first solar cell. And I'm also going to connect uh, the next two wires to hook it up to the next cell. Oh, I might run out of blue. Uh, hmm. They're pretty close together, so I probably don't need that much. <laughs> Last minute calculations. Okay. I'm gonna strip both of these. Oh yeah, and. Um, since everything is in parallel, it doesn't really matter which contacts I use. Uh, and both of these contacts are connected, so it doesn't really matter where I put anything. I'm going to use blue for positive, black for ground. And this is going to go that way, I guess. Cool. So let's tin everything. Oh, that's still hot. As well as my little wires over here. Definitely a crowded workbench day. Now the other thing that I will need to do is make sure that I can hook up the other panel to this one. <laughs> I think that'll be fine because I have some slack in it. So. This is going to go like that. Oh, I see. The silver part goes that way. Hmm. No, we'll go this way. I'm actually going to cut a slit for these to go through, I think. Yeah. So where's my knife gone? I put it back in the holder like a sensible person. Wow. Fancy that. Okay. Here's my initial incision. Haha. <laughs> Always use knives with the supervision of an adult. I'm an adult so I can supervise myself. And we're going to solder these wires on. And is tinned. Here we are. These will be going this way, so I want them to go like that.
And then I'm also going to connect with these. Oh, that should be sideways. This is solid core hookup wire, which means that uh, it's just got one wire on the inside, which means that it is less flexible and really doesn't want to be flexed because it might break compared to stranded hookup wire. So I'm going to make sure that these wires are already facing in the directions that I want them to go. which requires a little bit of juggling. There we go. I need to add more solder there. There we go. Pretty good. All right. Oh, I did this backwards. Whoops. Uh, right, of course, because it's going to be flipped upside down. Well, that's fine. I can just bend these over and pretend like that never happened. <laughs> Here we are. And now these guys are going to go through this little slot that I created. kind of hard to see on a black hat, isn't it? Let's see what I can do about the lighting. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna pull on all the wires to sort of seat it in place. <sighs> So this way we have both electrical and uh, mechanical connections. And I want to make sure that the soldered connections aren't all that's holding this in place. So later on I'm going to add some foam tape to hold it down. Um, I can't stand having that film on there. Just had to peel it off. So later on I'm going to add some foam tape and some maybe hot glue to hold everything down. Uh, that will make sure that I'm not stressing and pulling on those soldered connections when I move stuff around. All right, so uh, we're already a ways into this broadcast and I do need to get lunch. So I think what I'll do is, uh, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm going to solder everything up in parallel, as shown here. And then I'm going to come back uh, and show you what I've got in a couple hours. How about that? Because otherwise I'm just going to have to keep talking on this sore throat and you're going to be like, she's doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Someone says, where's the pizza? Looks like a raspberry and this thing works. I'm not sure what you mean, but okay. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, the sun isn't always be empowering. Uh, all right, thank you all for sharing your comments, and I'll be back in a couple hours. Have a great What the Wednesday. Until then, ciao.